Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Derbero, Assistant Research Director for Kentucky State University College of Agriculture, Food Science and Sustainable Systems. Uh, I'm also a professor and extension specialist in the Division of Aquaculture here at the university as well. In that capacity, I work with county agents, working with uh, landowners, managing their ponds, as well as um, working with uh, high schools and high school teachers that work with uh, closed systems. So one thing that we have to do when we work with, uh, with people is with their, with their water management is check water quality. Uh, with the tank systems, uh, whenever you feed fish, uh, there's an ammonia buildup, and the ammonia has to be checked and monitored or it can be toxic to the fish. Uh, the ammonia breaks down to nitrite and that has to also be checked. So we'll be going through uh, the actual testing procedures using this FF1 test kit here for ammonia and for nitrite. To test for ammonia, we use these test tubes that come with the kit and we use this box here. It has an ammonia color wheel in the box and we use five cc's or five milliliters of the, of the tank water and you could either fill it up to this up to where the frosting starts in this tube or you can, I think this is a little bit easier actually to use a syringe. So the syringe is marked off into cc's or cubic centimeters. Uh, 10 cc's is the same thing as 10, 10, uh, 10 milliliters. So when we're filling these tubes, we'll fill the syringe up to 10, 10 cc's or 10 milliliters. Put them in the, the test tube rack here and we'll put five cc's or five milliliters in one tube and five cc's in the other tube and one of the tubes we won't add anything to, we'll leave it blank. And to this tube here for the ammonia test, we'll first of all add one drop of Rochelle salt solution. Okay, and then we'll mix that up If the water is hard, which in a lot of places around Kentucky the water is hard, the Rochelle salt keeps this next solution here, the Nestle reagent, from uh, kind of clumping. So we'll use this Nestle reagent here and we'll add three drops of it to that same test tube. Shake that up and then we need to wait 10 minutes for the color to develop. And for speed of this demonstration, uh, 10 minutes ago, I started this test here with the ammonia and we got this color developed. So this, this tube here will turn this color eventually within the next 10 minutes, but instead of waiting, we'll go ahead and get that result here. We'll put it in this box on the right side and we'll take the blank tube that we didn't add anything to on the left side. And then what I do is I usually hold it up so that I have fluorescent lighting in back of me and in front of me. And I try to match the color wheel reading with the test tube. And, and I get a 1.2. So I get a 1.2 parts per million or milligrams per liter of total ammonia with this test here. Now there is uh, also uh, uh, the, the most crucial step here is to calculate the toxic ammonia and in order to do that we need to check the pH and temperature of this water and then we will refer to a table and we'll get a number from the table based on the temperature and pH readings So while we're leaving that thermometer in there for a little while, I will get the uh, pH meter and use it to check the pH of this water. Mm. 
and this is the type of meter I think that uh, that has uh, is available to a lot of uh, high schools around Kentucky and we'll simply turn it on here okay, and have this meter plugged in here it's important to keep the probe you can see it's in a, a humid type of uh, enclosure here and we take the probe out of this protective enclosure where it's stored and then we need to calibrate the meter and we'll first of all use this pH 7 known pH 7 solution here and I, I find it helps if you move the probe a little bit and there's a little uh, screw with the seven next to it right right here and if this will probably have to be adjusted slightly to make it 7.0 and we have just find a tiny little flathead screwdriver that fits in here and we're getting the reading of 6.97 that's essentially probably good enough for calibration but I'll just go ahead and show you that I can just turn this screw a little bit here and adjust it up to up to pH 7. At this point I will remove the probe from this uh, calibrating solution, pH 7 calibrating, and I'll rinse it off in this uh, distilled water here. I'll plug this pH 7 solution back up, set it aside, and we'll get out the uh, pH 10, known pH 10 solution, and the probe's cleaned off now. I'll put it into my pH 10 solution, and you can see it's, it's uh, approaching 10, 9.95. Uh, I can move it around a little bit too. I think that helps. And uh, if you were doing this, you know, in your, at your school, uh, and it actually did go up to 10 there. If, uh, if it doesn't go up to 10, you can simply uh, use this screw here. It says 4 or 10. You can adjust this screw to make it 10 here when you're calibrating. Now, since it's calibrated, I'll rinse the probe off again. I'll set this aside here and I'll put the probe into the solution into the tank water solution that I'm interested in checking the pH for and you see the pH is uh, oh, approximately 8.1 um, uh, 8 point looks like it's going dropping down a little bit to 8 7.97 okay so 7.8 is the rough pH of this solution and the temperature is 18 degrees centigrade, 18 degrees C. So we simply use the table uh, and we find the number that corresponds to uh, the temperature of 18 uh, degrees or what's it, 18 degrees C and uh, a pH of 7.8. Um, and then we, we take the number that we got in this from this color wheel, 1.2 parts per million total ammonia, multiply it by that number from that table, and that gets us the milligrams per liter or parts per million of toxic or unionized ammonia. Toxic or unionized ammonia of 0 0.4 parts per million or higher can give fish a problem. Um, it can kill fish or it can actually uh, uh, cause them to not eat as much and grow less and uh, it reduces survivability. When we're through with these tests here, this is especially important when we're dealing with Nestler reagent. Nestler reagent, which we used in this test, has mercury in it. And this waste container here 
is specifically designed to uh, hold mercury waste from the Nessel reagent. And these are very important procedures to do because we don't want to contaminate our water supply. Our aquifers in the state might get contaminated if we simply dump these down the sink. Uh, 